is that? What the fuck is that? Hello, how are you going? How are you doing? How are you? Today I'm going to talk about Savage Land from 2015. Um, now, Savage Land is a fictional documentary, more commonly known as a, a, a mockumentary, I think, but I don't like using that term because it sounds like it's, you know, it's, take, it's a piss take, a mockumentary, but uh, no, what it is is a fictional documentary and it concerns the events uh, surrounding uh, a massacre in a small town in Arizona that's just like a stone's throw away from the US-Mexico border. Uh, and pretty much the entire population of this small town, like 57 people, are butchered. Um, and the, uh, the blame falls on this one guy who's lived there. I think he's called, was it Fernando Salazar? Um, and he was kind of a bit of a oddball, bit of a, considered a bit of a drifter type. Uh, even though he'd been living there for like seven years, this, I don't think this was this, was, this wasn't by the townsfolk, but uh, the local like authorities and that. Um, and he was found with was it fucking about fifteen different types of blood on his person. So, you know, the local sheriffs naturally assumed it was him. Um, so this uh, this documentary focuses on his. Well, the the events uh, after that, where he's you know he's being arrested and locked up in the like the ensuing trial and whatnot, but then as uh, it, things roll on, people start to say, well, hang on, how, how did this one dude like kill fifty seven people in the manner that, that which they were killed, and you know a lot of doubt is um, voiced, and then. Uh, this guy who's like a journalist is uh, documenting the case um, I think it's him he comes into possession of a roll of film um, because this Fernando Salazar guy was a very keen amateur photographer and this roll of film is basically a collection of 30 some photos that he took that documents the events that happened that night um, because he's been fairly tight-lipped since then, uh, he only opened up to one interviewer while he was like, you know, in jail. And these photos show, I'm not sure what you could call it, but they look somewhat like zombies, but um, some of us look like kind of spectres and other kinds of like kind of demon type of things and others just look like distorted images of, of like distorted humanoid image uh, so maybe like a kind of a ghosty type of thing um, but these photos are dismissed by you know the prosecution and that has been having been doctored so yeah, the kind of, the, kind of the, the story of what happened is told through, through these photos and some um, also little bits of this interview that was with the Fernando Salazar character. Um, but this is like a really... These photos are really kind of like good, but in terms of like creeping you out, but yeah, but, you, but you're not sure what the fuck it is that you're seeing. Um, like I said, they document the events as it goes along. So, like the first photo you see is these like figures coming over the hill towards the town, but they don't look. They look kind of human shaped, but there's something fucking funny about you know <laughs> something a bit off about them. Um, and then this other couple of photos, next couple of photos, it um, are of one of the residents of the town. Or he might have been a resident of the neighbouring town. Um, and that's one of my favourite photos out of the bunch in terms of, um, you know, it telling the story. Because it's, it's, it's basically a shot of this uh, guy who's a hunter. And he's like, and it shows him like, grabbing his 
rifle out of the back of his pickup truck and um and the look on his face it's like a mixture of like panic fear and um what's the word kind of what the f what the fuck is this that's I'm seeing right now what's the What's the word for that? Oh, I, don't know. I can't think of it right now. <clears throat> but yeah, um, and that just kind of like brings home the uh, the the, uh, the bizarre nature of the uh, things that did attack the town and were responsible for this massacre. Because there is also because it's like you know a photo documentary. There's also like. Uh, news footage that shows like the aftermath of the killings and it's pretty uh it's pretty gory shit but it's not like oh it it, it, it just kind of like flashes on it don't like linger on this stuff um so whatever these creatures did you know it was well, i call them creatures whatever these things did you know it was uh pretty messy this film also touches on kind of like the uh Kind of the hick racism towards Mexicans or Hispanic people uh, along the border, at least, because um, it you know it touches on elite, elite. Because this Fernando Salazar is an illegal immigrant, even though he's been living there for seven years. Uh, what's a town called Santa de Cristo? Maybe that's something along those lines. Um, so then you also see footage of all these like. You know, all these fucking rednecks and I like her. Get these illegals out of here. <laughs> um, let's see. And basically talking about them is like, hey, they celebrate death down there. And they're inhuman. They're savages. Uh, and the reason this film's called Savage Land is because uh, these hicks have dubbed the town of Santa de Cristo as they call it Savage Land. Um, I think, or are they referring to Mexico itself? I think they're referring to the town, that's why they start calling it Savage Land because it's a largely it's Mexican or Hispanic population. That kind of drives the narrative as well, this uh, this subtext of uh, you know, racism and bigotry. Because it mentions like times like the Ku Klux Klan and stuff like that in other places have like gone and killed people. So at one point I was like kind of pondering what, what, what are these are these creatures kind of what are they people or something because some of them look like zombies like I said and others look like just kind of phantoms and such and others just look you know they can't tell what they are they just kind of have a distorted image um, but I just love the, the, the mystery of this uh, as it goes along it, goes, it runs like you know just like a, a documentary would interviews are like you know journalists and uh, kind of some people who lived uh, nearby or, or, or had family in that town. So yeah, the film uh, draws to its conclusion eventually after it's, it's basically just been a lot of discussion about these photos uh, and and also like they've been piecing together like the, the events uh, and the chronology of that, of the events of that night, using these pictures basically. So at the conclusion of the film, um, this Fernando Salazar, he ends up uh, being found guilty and his appeal is uh, overturned or he's found guilty again, whatever. And he ends up being uh, sentenced to death and executed. This is all told uh, told in past tense by, well, because it's like because it's a documentary, you know, or you know, pretend documentary. So all this stuff's occurred already. Um, and then it, the the ending of this, where it show it shows this found footage taken from. Well, no. First, it says that there's been more like killings since this guy was sentenced to death, but they've been travel. It's been going happening further north, um, which impl 
which is, I don't know if it, it's implied that this like demonic force has just like come from basically the border and is just traveling up through America and there's this footage that these campers who were killed uh, uh, there's some damaged footage taken from their video camera and it shows them being like uh, hoard, uh, swamped by these you can't, look, you can't really tell what they are because it's, cause it's like knackered footage so it's just like all uh, pixely and that so it just gives you like little flashes and glimpses the little flash that, I, that stuck in my head was where the person with the camera, camera was um, set up on by what looked a bit like Fernando Salazar but like a an undead version of him perhaps because it looked like it had like an orange jumpsuit like the one he had when he was in prison um, and it also mentions previous um, because there's also this fucking this radio host guy who's like a right wing cocksucker um, Gus Greer and he's all like I'm a patriot and let's kick these immigrants out and all that horseshit and mentions because it plays little snippets of his broadcasts to, uh, to uh, aid the narrative in, 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 in regards to this uh, subtext of like you know xenophobia or xenophobia or whatever. and in this he mentions that uh, the grave of Fernando Salazar was kind of plundered and his body stolen and he, he re this Gus Greer reckons it was uh, a reaction to him being buried on American soil or in on, in Arizona, the state of Arizona. Um, but then that got me thinking after I'd see, after the film had finished, it's like, well, did did Fernando Salazar rise from the grave and become part of this whatever these things were? Um, so yeah, cause that, that's a great thing about, well, I'm kind of split on the ending, part of me, because it never tells you what these things were, ne well, it never properly gives you uh, a resolution, it, it leaves it open to interpretation, and it's, it you know, remains ambiguous, which uh, is kind of frustrating, but also really good, because you know, it makes you think about the film afterwards, you're like, well, what the film I was. So, um, today while I've been at work, you know, I was just like, pondering it from time to time, it's like, yeah, yeah, so, what was that, I mean, was this, this story itself, was it a, uh, you know, kind of, uh, allegory for mob mentality, and the, this, you know, the brutality of, like, bigotry, and, you know, specific, towards ethnic minorities in the United States, you know, since the inception of the United States. Um, I mean, there is that, that's in there as well, that subtext of, of this. Um, and also, the, over the closing credits, it shows uh, that this Fernando Salazar is going to be martyred. There's a big mural of him and there's loads of people have got a tattoo of his face. Uh, kind of looks like fucking Super Mario a bit, uh, and we're all like looking at the camera, and uh, there's this one dude who's like, uh, like he's like really angry, um, so it's like this Fernando Salazar's become uh, like a, a martyr for social injustice in America. Um, but yeah, I thought this this uh, this. Film is great. I mean, if you like, I mean, I love this this, this template anyway. You know, it's, I mean, I love found footage stuff, even if it's not very good. I still can get into it, and the same is with these, uh, you know, f uh, fictional documentaries. Uh, but this one was really good. I mean, it's really, really creeped you out, uh, and you're like, what the fuck? What what did happen that night? I mean, these pictures. I mean, the pictures are, they say a, a picture can speak a thousand words, um, and the way these are done, uh, it, it just it just gets your imagination stoked. It's like, well, what the fuck is that? What, 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 what is this? What, why is this? 
Um, is this, well, yeah, I don't like it. It just leaves you with questions, you know. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where it gives you enough, but then it lets your imagination fill in the blanks, which is ultimately a more engaging experience. Uh, for any film, really, especially like you know, supernatural horror or mystery type stuff. Um, but yeah, I I thought it was, it was this was gripping. Um, you know, fascinated, draws you in. You know, you know, I'm able to suspend my disbelief with stuff like that. Sim similar to the the last broadcast, which again was another. That was one of the original, considered to buy some as the original found footage. I remember the Blair Witch Project got a bit of flack for, got accused of plagiarising the last broadcast, but it's like, well, no, it didn't. I mean, it's, they're both set in the woodlands, you know, but it's, it's two different things. Um, but yeah, this is in, of that ilk, but I'd say, I'd say this was done a lot more stylishly. Uh, it's it's much more realistic in terms of it being a, a documentary and stuff, and overall uh, the story or the mystery of what did happen or what these things were, why they were, is um, ultimately it gets under your skin a lot more than uh, that did. But yeah, uh, Savage Land, it is fucking very good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I highly recommend you watch it. I believe it might be on YouTube, so yeah. Stop wasting your time watching this dickhead and uh, watch watch that. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye. I need three days notice to have a wank.